Hello everyone, welcome back to Malware Analysis Crash Course. In my previous video, I showed how to perform static malware analysis without executing the malware. In this video, I'm going to show the dynamic malware analysis, which is a behavior or interactive analysis. So what we are going to do is we just executing the malware in a sandbox environment and we're going to understand the behavior, how it is malware functioning, how it is executing everything and all in a sandbox environment. Without further ado, let's get into the video. I'll be doing dynamic malware analysis inside Flare VM sandbox. I'll be giving the link in the description. Please check up how to set up a Flare VM. Before starting up, we have to check few parameters. Always download the malware samples in a zip and password protector. So I have already downloaded a sample file. I have downloaded the sample file from this website. There are plenty of malware samples are there. So you can use it for your practice and things so this is one step second step ensure the sandbox is not having internet because the sandbox should not communicate with the outside world so to ensure it there is no internet access let's quickly go and confirm that as well go to the command prompt let ping in website and see that it there is no internet connectivity so these are the two parameters we have to check so in this demonstration, I am going to use certain tools. So tool number one, I'm just going to use a red shot. What this tool will be doing is, we'll take a first snapshot of the registry before executing the malware. And after executing the malware, we'll take the second shot and we'll do a comparison. What is happening means what are the kernel level or registry level changes was happened over there. And one more thing is Procmon. This is a Microsoft tool. This will help us to what and all process has been created, has been uh, generated what deals has been executed all the informations this process monitor will give us but once you start it it will give a lot of things so let me stop it now because i don't want to crash my sandbox so i have stopped it let me delete all the things so that nothing i'm just ensuring nothing process is capturing over there so the capture is stopped and one more thing is process so this will is a uh exactly look like a task manager but this will give you more detail about what process is running over in the system so now it will tell me the what are the processes running in an explorer way it will be easy for me to identify in, a, in detail what is it's happening over there so let me keep it in the one okay so this is one tool and uh, last not but the least fake net because this sandbox doesn't have an internet. If suppose malware is trying to communicate with the outside world, we need to capture what and all it where which host it is communicating, what IP is communicating, the DNS registries, everything we have to capture it. So how to do it means there is a fake DNS. Let's go and quickly run the fake DNS. So to do that, copy the folder, go to the command prompt. We're just going to capture all the output as output file so can I, let me quickly again i'll confirm it ping paper.in so still enter this box doesn't have internet so it's unable to find the host so let's quickly go to the directory of this fake net and uh, we will run fakenet.exe and we will convert this into output as output.log file so that will be easier for us to uh, verify things so let give enter okay so the fakenet.exe is just started it is just giving the internet connectivity seems like so let's go back to the firefox and uh, let's try to access people.in so all these informations will be captured in the logs so that we can go back earlier we can refer it 
So you can see that the domain is just received it. So if someone, and again, it's going to the request from where it is Firefox.exe. So it will give a more. So there is no internet, but still you can understand which application is requesting for what IP address, what kind of request is sending, which domain or which IP address. You can just basically uh, navigate to this. So let's keep this output, keep running on it. And uh, let's quickly, let's take the first shot. Of the registry before the malware execution in meantime let's go and extract the sample this is a this malware sample is an adware extract here the password is infected and let me rename this file for a better understanding adware.exe okay so now let's go and see this done or not okay so still it is going on let me quickly run this adware.exe and uh, let me quickly start the capture. So let me stop this capture so you can see that the sample has downloaded some bash script and it is executed and it is deleted all the both the virus means adware.exe and the bash file also deleted so let's go back quickly and we will start investigation on it first of all let me see any logs is in the dns logs So let me find adware.exe. So there is no communications has happened in the backend. What we will do, one thing is we will export this all this file as a comma separated value CSV file, and I'll name it as one click CSV. Let me close this one and let me try to see what and all it has happened using the in a graphical way using application called prop dot so that will be put in a diagrammatic representation in a flow chart so that we can understand what has happened and everything and all so let's open a prop dot So I'm just uploading the process monitor file. So propmon, and it is saved in the desktop prop file once CSV. And let me analyzing. It will take some time. It depends upon the capture events. Okay. So now we have to save from where we have to start all the process. So I know the malware, this is the malware got executed. So I'm just selecting this one and let me put it in the diagrammatic representation. So it's creating an interactive graph. So it, now we got an interactive graph. So you can see that add the, when we executed, it is making a few registry changes in internet settings since it is adware it is making a few registries changes and it is also creating a process called cmd.exe and also creating dot install.exe 
file and uh, it is going it's creating a temporary uh, data install.tmp and from here it is there is one more process is created install.tmp and it is getting up uh, from here it is there and uh, there is a few more registries creating registries you can see the registry level is checking this all the changes was happening it and it is creating finally it's creating a del.bat.cmd file and uh, even this is also then in the sample it's download it's it's downloading the del.bnt cmd and execution is happening and from there it is created this is a process it's a legitimacy con host.exe of microsoft legacy one it is using again the execution dls and libraries loading from the microsoft and this is what happened so when we execute this malware this is the complete understanding uh, what and all it's see what and all changes is executing so it's a basically it's a behavior analysis we allowing the malware to execute and capture all the event so that we can understand this malware what and all it see for example it has created something in a program files uh, so some folder has been created spay and pen and temp files has been downloaded dot temp and it created a registry changes few registry changes in war 64 node and those things again once it is created what has happened in there so so in some files has been created in the program os and it is also it created a unc.exe file and it is you can see this you can see the flow chart so everything is completed here and it is happening here then it is nc and the library is loading here from here so this is the malware execution so we can understand what this malware is happening and we can capture all this uh, event into a uh, yara rule so that in future if you are seeing any this kind of uh, uh, malware we can use our mal uh, yara rule for classification so this is how you can do a malware by executing we just capturing it and uh, so if suppose anything is communicating with the outside world we could have captured the uh, ips and everything uh, so only thing is i'm just seeing is firefox.exe is trying to communicate with the proxies so it's bypassing the proxies and trying to authenticate and uh, so this is what I all I see the DNS request is mostly the DNS request is going from the firefox.exe uh, because firefox.exe is the default browser so it's happening all the request is going from there okay so this is the dynamic malware analysis using uh, uh, flare vm you can do it so I hope you guys uh, got a good understanding good amount of understanding uh, dynamic malware analysis uh, so one thing is just when you are executing the malware sample just please ensure you are executing the samples in the sandbox environment with uh, no internet connectivity because uh, and also ensure your the sandbox your hypervisor whatever your hypervisor you are using it should be up to date because if there is any if it is not up to date if there is a chances of using that vulnerability this malware samples can get escaped and it can infect your host mission as well so that's it guys uh, so we have did a dynamic malware analysis and uh, we can understand one things so even this one registry shot right so uh, it seems like not responding but ultimately even what we can do is once after this executions we can uh, do a uh, second snapshot and you can see the comparison it will automatically it will show you a uh, difference like what is or original and what is has been modificated so you can get but unfortunately this red shot is not working i'm so sorry i unable to show it but in the prop doc i which already we showed what and all registry has been changes so so basically if, if you want to roll back all the changes you can capture using that event you can go back and you can delete those registries in there and you can delete the uh, files has been created in the program x 65s and all things and you can delete and you can clear it over the infected machines okay one thing i just want to show you guys is uh, yes so now this mission is completely infected uh, so 
So I would always take a snapshot of it before the starting the malware analysis or when you setting up the first time, right? So create a snapshot because that was always helpful. So once you're done with the investigation, you can restore the snapshot so that this will missions will go back before the malware infection was happened. So again, you can start the investigation with the new samples and every time you can roll back to the previous and you can do investigations because you cannot do the keep on doing the malware investigations by keep infecting your machine. So you always you need to start from the scratches. So this will help you more helpful. So I'm just restoring the snapshot. Okay, so now successfully I have restored the snapshot so that now it is back before uh, we when we start before the investigations are right. So we went to that uh, level. So one more thing is if suppose uh, you don't have a proper sandbox environment or you don't have a hardware or you are in a system where you don't use sandbox kind of thing or uh, there are other solutions. What is the alternate solution in case if you don't have a sandbox? So you can use go with the cloud-based sandbox. So there are three sandbox which will be helpful. So one is hybrid analysis, any run. So these are the cloud-based uh, uh, dynamic ones. So this any run, right? You can execute it and it can be interactive one. Uh, you can do any interactions and it's a cloud-based sandbox environment. Uh, so you can use this one or you can use a automated this is a completely automated malware analysis all you need to upload the sample then you can analyze it will do a, a different comparisons like uh, it will do a, a falcon it is a falcon it's created powered by falcon so they it will run the malware sample in the falcon sandbox and it'll give the information what we want what we have seen in the flare vm right so in a in a proper structure way you can do it on it so this is also there and other one is cuckoo sandbox this is the open source sandbox so same way you can uh, host it in any ubuntu machines or any other cloud one and you can uh, this is a more useful and you can run the malware samples this is the open source first and uh, any of this uh, you want to run it uh, you want to see how this any run or cuckoo sandbox if you want to know how to set a cuckoo sandbox uh, please comment on it so i can uh, see if based on your comments and based on your requirements i'll i'll try to do a videos on how to do a dynamic malware analysis on the cloud based platforms so that's it guys i hope you guys got a good understanding of the dynamic malware analysis and overall uh, the malware complete analysis crash course was useful for you guys if you have any doubts or if you have any questions or if you want if some certain tools are not working or some questions you having it feel free to comment on it i'll i'll happy to answer it and uh, if you like this video hit the like button if you think video is useful please consider to subscribe the channel show your support by giving like comment share and subscribing follow me on social media platform thank you all for watching this video signing off now uh, very soon i'll be catching you with another crash courses